crap, I think I figured it out. Alright, well, now I've figured out what uh, differences I can do with this, so, yeah, anyway, um, welcome back, I uh, had to rescale a few things, so things might look a little different, maybe a little clearer, apologize for the last couple streams, uh, and I wanted to finish my thought, uh, so when it comes to sidechain compression, uh, how you want to trigger things, uh, how you want, you know, what you want specific versus attack release, uh, and then your sample. So, uh, I'll reiterate the sample itself, uh, lasts for duration. So you can see that duration, uh, at the bottom here, uh, listed gives you the time selection so when you select something it gives you you know of the selection what the length is all that kind of stuff right so you have a start point you have an end point uh, you have a length and then it gives you a duration in uh, minutes seconds and milliseconds and the kick itself is 367 milliseconds long right uh, you have your transient portion which is uh, anywhere between 10 to 30, 40 milliseconds, depending on the kick. Uh, and then you have your base portion as it has the, uh, uh, the pitch of the kick, the uh, pitch of the transient basically comes down, um, and turns into the bass tone, uh, of the drum itself. Uh, a starting point there is, you know, roughly 30, 40 milliseconds and then last for this particular kick uh, kind of tones out for the rest of the, the rest of the kick essentially so at some point between uh, one and let's say we'll use this zero crossing right here so right about here the very beginning and this is the real technical stuff that you know you're not really taught but slowly figure out so that is 25 milliseconds so if I want something to attack right let's select like for the tops I want the transient to come out of the kick uh, and I want you know everything to be cut away from there so with my tops go back to my compression so that the attack time is with the glue compressor is you know point zero one point one point three one millisecond three millisecond you know these are uh, the knobs values are milliseconds right so I need to have the attack be somewhere in the range of zero to uh, 25 so I don't want to set 30 uh, 1 millisecond is perfectly fine um, point zero one's a little nuts but whatever uh, the release uh, the knobs values are in seconds so point zero one second uh, if we took a calculator um, Well, we can't do that. That's why maybe it might be a better idea to use an actual compressor. Just a regular compressor. So then we can define these times. Side chain input from the kick. So I've got point zero one milliseconds. I, don't, I, I could go that crazy, but we don't have to. So again, the kick is, you know, you can have some that you want the transient to be the most out of it. So actually, we'll do one millisecond. Actually, less than. Let's do half a millisecond. Okay. 
the release we want for tops and and the shaker we really just want the transient we don't necessarily need the boom of the kick to push the tops and the shaker away we want the boom of the kick to push the baseline out uh, so the release of the tops and the shaker needs to be less than 25 well actually make I'll just make it 25 roughly 24.8 perfect so that's when the boom of the kick uh, kind of starts to happen transient done and you know we just want the tops and the shaker to be uh, ducked down um, and with the transient being so quick uh, let me go back to the kick really quick and I'll start about here so that's five milliseconds seven yeah it's five to seven milliseconds so let's go to the tops and let's just make this yeah let's make the attack like one point yeah 1.5, 1.67. Obviously, we want. Some attack, or some of the threshold to come down, and ratio. So with that, I'm listening to the kick versus with or without. Uh, I'm listening to the tops with or without the kick uh, involved, and without the you know side chain to see where exactly everything kind of sits. Um, just to get a feel for it. And the thing we could do here is we can um, actually strip the tops. Uh, let's take this uh, compressor and we'll group it. Uh, and I have a, I actually have an audio effect rack that's a perfect low high split. So you got the lows and then the high split inverted. Alright. Um, and essentially if you want something to be against the lows, so much so for the highs. I mean this is a different uh, option uh in regards to uh doing the multi band compression. Uh it uses a series of uh phase inversions and cutoffs and uh, that in order to cancel out the lows in which case the highs come out but that's uh, an explanation for another day um, so I'm going to take this compressor that I've been using and I'm just going to use it on the lows and apply it to that and now all I'm doing is ducking out the low portions of this top. And that way, I can still get a, a good beef of the, kit, of the clap. And in reality, I don't think there's a whole lot of low end to this. So 
so I'm not too worried about it. But it's just a precautionary. Just to clean everything up. And then I'm basically going to take this and duplicate it and put it on the shaker. Time with a drive. And we're golden. And then I have the audio effect, the triple band splitter thing, whatever. Um, I'm going to take that off. Oop, no, not what I want to do. And uh, simply take that uh, perfect splitter thing again. Duplicate to the baseline, but I'm going to change a little bit to it. So in this this portion, uh, essentially, I am going to adjust the attack, and uh, the release value. Thank you. 
That's why you probably can't hear me, because I had my mic muted. Although I wasn't saying much anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, just kind of cleaning up the grain pad a little bit. Um, simply just, uh, I'm compressing the initial sound uh, before doing any of the effects because the drastic dynamic changes in the sound um, don't help with the erosion and and uh, enhance overdrive that I threw on there with changing a little bit of the preset uh, to you know, kind of incorporate what I want to enhance. Um, I might even EQ this green pad thing a little bit because there seems to be a little bit of low end in it that I don't really need. Um, I'm going to compress and then EQ simply because I just want the dynamic change to happen and then I can cut out all the lows after everything. And just to be on the safe side, here's my cat. Um, EQ the tops. I think I played around with Slew for enough uh, hours in the day. So, until next time. <laughs>